Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Uh, today, we are talking about a bird, at least here in the Midwest, in the Kansas City region where I live, has been increasing steadily over the last 30 years. Now, you guys in the South know these birds, I'm sure. They're, they're very common down there. I grew up with them. Uh, and, and I think you guys up in the Northeast part of the United States uh, are going to uh, be in the same boat I am out here in Kansas City and that they, their numbers have gr greatly grown over the last 30 years or so. They were primarily a Southern Hawk. Uh, and let's get him on there. And the bird I'm referring to is the red-shouldered hawk. Uh, so it, it's not a giant hawk. It's not you know as big as our, the most common red-tailed hawks. So they're a little bit larger than a crow, but they are adapting really well to our urban areas. Uh, the birds that you seem to encounter in, in urban areas seem to be very tolerant of people. You can get very close to them. But like a lot of wilder birds, birds that, that don't grow up or around uh, people, they are shyer and they do fly away. But I grew up knowing this bird as the swamp hawk or the uh, or the, the wetland hawk or the snake hawk. There are many different uh, names and things that people call them because they are very much a wetland bird of prey. Uh, they, they forested areas, especially wet forested areas, uh, the southern swamps, um, even here in Kansas City, you know, areas that have uh, creeks and streams, and and they their diet uh, is more you know, small mammals, uh, reptiles, uh, and you know, lizards and snakes in the, in the south. They're, they commonly eat those, and even crayfish, things like that. Um, in the winter months, I, I, I'm, it's mainly small mammals uh, that they can find, chipmunks and, and voles and moles that are, that are uh, on the surface and things, but uh, they rarely, rarely take birds. And, and that's what the, a question I get a lot since they have become more common up in our region. I do get calls uh, on these guys saying, oh, are my, my birds in danger at my bird feeder from these guys? Well, no, usually not. I, as a matter of fact, the birds at bird feeders I find really get used to these birds and, and when they, they, they come in and they, they don't really shy away from, from red-shouldered hawks very much. And but you know, I can say if you're a small mammal, especially if you're a lizard or a snake, you definitely have something to fear from it because they are they are predators and they they're very good at catching the food they do catch. And they they live in those like I said, they live in those southern really wet areas and, in, and wherever you are, I mean, they breed as far north now as Maine and even southern uh, Canada, right up against the U.S. border, there's, you know, there's nesting records up there now. So that's an incredible expansion over the last many years. And they are absolutely beautiful birds. Um, they also uh, vary a lot in color, which we're going to talk about. Uh, but I wanted to play the song for you because that may help clarify something for you. Because uh, I get asked about this call a lot. I, I People send me recordings and what is this calling in, the, in my woods, in my backyard? What is this? So I'm going to play it. And again, I use the Sibley app to birds. I love it. Uh, the pictures are there um, and the recordings are there. So I was going to play a, a typical red-shouldered hawk sound and see if you recognize this. Now, I hear it. Right out back here. I know they nest in the woods back behind me because it's really low down my, in my backyard and, and, and water. It doesn't hold water very often, but it is a real wet area. And I know those red shoulders nest back in there. But uh, one thing, the, the one bird, and, and if you listen to my Learn These Turn 10 bird songs recently, I talked about blue jays and how they are mimics and they, they will, they love imitating red shouldered hawk calls. And then you'll hear a blue jay doing something pretty close to this from time to time, but especially in the spring uh, when the, the mating season is, these guys are flying around and uh, uh, calling and flirting and, and courting and, and, it, and it, you'll hear that song a lot, but you'll hear that throughout the year too. You'll hear that coming from your woods and they are definitely woodland birds. And again, you guys out in the Great Plains, 
this is a rare bird for you to be able to see because they're not open country birds. These are these are woodland birds. So um, they there may be a few uh, scattered reports and nesting reports out, uh, but really, boy, here in Kansas City, we're in, in eastern Kansas, about as far west as red shoulders can to be to be dependably seen. Um, but who knows? They may may be expanding. You know, one of with, with increased planting of trees and things. So let's get into identification of the red shouldered hawk. Beautiful rufous red uh, chest on them. And when I say they vary in color a lot, I really mean that. You guys down in Florida and, and especially southern Florida, these birds are really, really pale. Uh, you know, nearly rufous as these guys are. The head is pretty much gray, um, but that black and white in the wings is there. It may not be quite as brilliant as in marked these, but you see those black and white stripes in the wing. It, it's a really good indication. And there's primary feathers there. Um, I'll put one up of them in flight. And let's let me shrink me down a little bit here. Okay, so you get you a little bit better picture. But when I when I'm teaching and I, I and we're in the field and we see red shouldered hawks, I hear them and we get a chance to see them, the one of the first things I try to get my bird watchers to key in on is that tail. Now again, you know, light can be tough. Uh, and you can see the rufous uh, and, and the shoulders, if you will, uh, sometimes, but the, sometimes the light is tricky. But typically you get that light through the tail. And I say that a red-shouldered hawk has a black tail with white stripes. And I hope that makes sense. Uh, there's the striping in the wings, which are the black and white that we could see from when it was sitting still. But that black and white tail will separate it out from some birds that look a lot like this. And we're going to get into the lookalike birds too here at the end. But this is a, a, a really good photo of uh, that black tail with white stripes. Here is a, a brilliant shot uh, that my friend Mary took of a nest uh, in the area a few years back. Um, and it, it, the, you can, the black and white in the wings uh, is, is visible there, but you can see the young, and, and I think she witnessed them bringing in several snakes to this nest when she was photographed it over time. Now, they're a little bit harder to, to identify whenever they're juveniles. This is after those white fluffy birds you saw there. Now, when they leave the nest, when their first plumage doesn't look like that beautiful adult with the rufous chest and, and just the, uh, the brilliant colors. This is a young bird, and he'll look much more like that pig, the, the, the adult red shouldered hawks next year, but this year, and they are, one of the things that I look for in them is these really thick and dark areas on either side of the neck. Uh, and they're very dark chested birds too. Um, and then there's one here in flight, as we can you see, you can see it almost looks like a Fu Manchu mustache there uh, on the coming down from the sides there. So, uh, and then uh, a lot of them migrate out of here, uh, but we do have them over winter. There are some that they some some overwinter in Mexico and a lot of them overwinter in the United the southern United States, but many of them do overwinter here and where they're uh, where they hatch. Uh, I know uh, over the years again when I moved here thirty years ago, it, it would call this a hotline bird. In other words, if you saw a red shouldered hawk in the Kansas City region, people would call the rare bird hotline and report it. Uh, but now they're everywhere. I see them all over the city. Um, but, you know, and, and like you said, even in urban areas, right on power lines, sitting riding down in neighborhoods. And, and so they've become a lot more common. So, uh, and they're very beneficial. So let's move to birds that look like them. Okay, we're going to load up the broad wing hawk, which again, when I said earlier that the red shoulder hawk is a smaller hawk, it is much more, just a, maybe a little bit bigger than a crow. Uh, whereas red tail hawks are noticeably larger. Same, the broad wing hawk is also about a crow sized hawk. So they do look alike. But this is a, I, well, I have seen broad wing hawks in urban areas. I don't see them nearly as much as I do red shoulders. Um, these are very much woodland hawks and they do nest all through our region and, and the whole eastern two thirds of the US, again, not the Great Plains, not out in, in, in the open areas, but from basically the Kansas um, and right through the, the that whole line from, you know, of North America to the East Coast, they nest in forested areas. Now, one of the, whenever again, when we're out with my bird watching and we see them, generally we see them in flight. And again, I call for people uh, to, to look at the tail. 
Uh, there's another, the, the black rim, the black border of the wings is also a really good field mark. But if you look at that tail, I call the broadwing hawk a 50-50 hawk because its tail, uh, the, the white bands are as wide as the black bands. So uh, the, whereas on that red shouldered hawk that we had here, you can see that the, the, the white bands are much, much narrower than on the broadwing. So again, getting used to that, getting used to looking at that uh, will help you identify them. And of course, they sound very different. Uh, if, if this bird is calling, it's a high two pitch squeal. Um, that doesn't sound anything like that red shouldered hawk. So uh, that, that is one that can be confused with it. And of course, the famous, famous hawk that, it, it, across the whole region is the red tail hawk. And it's, it is much larger. And, and there's a lot of color variation in red tail hawks. This is an eastern red tail, as it's referred to, where the, the chest is much, much lighter and it has a belly band, but this one doesn't have a very dark one. So the color variation, but what we're used to seeing where they get their name, of course, is that beautiful rufous red tail, uh, the red tail hawk. And again, it is quite a bit larger. And these birds tend to sit out in the open more. Uh, and they range across Great Plains and, and into woodland areas. They nest pretty widely across uh, all the eastern United States. But again, it is a much larger hawk than, than the beautiful red shouldered that we are focusing on. So I hope that tells you uh, a bit about uh, the red shouldered hawk. Have you learned uh, something? that, that it, It's a great species profile. And again, one that's increasing for a lot of people. The, uh, the red shouldered, again, if you had, uh, haven't seen them in your area and you do live in the eastern two-thirds of the U.S. and southern Canada, um, be on the lookout for them because I think they're expanding even still. I mean, their, their uh, nesting range is, is uh, creeping northward. So if they're not in your area, listen for that call. It is very distinct. Um, and you may see them perched up in your backyard. You may see them, of course, uh, on a hike at a nature center or, or one of your parks and things like that. So the red-shouldered hawk, beautiful species, uh, very beneficial. A, a friend of mine who said he loves them because he eats snakes and he hates snakes. So that's, you know, they, they definitely do that. They're a bird uh, that does love to eat his reptile. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the program. If you want another species profile, another bird you want me to focus in on, send it out. Is. I'd love to talk, to talk about them. So if you like the program, please give us a like, give us a share. If you're on YouTube, I hope you, you hit that subscribe button. Until then, come on, let's talk birds.